guys, I'm sitting here today uh, with uh, Jeff Ford, better known as Plugmaster Ford, and Mike Clutter, better known as Missouri Mike. If you've seen any of their videos, you see that they're, they often do a lot of videos together. And uh, so I came up this week and uh, had a chance to, to uh, hang out with them for a day and see Jeff's new store, which he'll probably tell you a little bit about at the end of this video, and uh, do a little digging. We had a good time, so make sure you watch those videos um, and uh, check out what we found. And they always have a weedy challenge, and so find out who the weedy king is on today. It's not me, that's for sure. And so... Jeff and Mike, I appreciate y'all sitting down with me and uh, give me a chance to kind of get an interview. And uh, you guys just feel free. Say what you want. I know you'll keep it clean. And uh, say whatever you want to say. But I've got certain questions I'd like to ask you. And uh, kind of my subscribers may not know who you guys are. And uh, so I want to ask some questions that would kind of help my fans get to know you. And maybe some of your fans even get to know me just a little bit. And um, and so a lot of you, Jeff, you're a lot bigger YouTuber than than Missouri Mike are, and uh, but Plugmaster Ford and Missouri Mike. Now I can see where you both got your name in the title, but how did that? How did you come up with the name Plugmaster Ford and, and Missouri Mike? How did y'all come up with that name? Well, you stayed the night with me, so you've met all my children, all seven. And uh, Denton, one of my kids, I was down at my little house. Uh, it's an old 1930s building, rock house. And so I was down there, and I was metal detecting, and um, I got a good signal. And I cut the plug, and I flipped it over and retrieved my item. And my kids had walked down just about that time. And I flipped the plug back over, and it just perfectly sealed. And my son goes, Wow. That was incredible. And I looked up and I just said, I'm a plug master. <laughs> and that sounds just like you too. <laughs> and he goes, Plug Master Ford. And I went, That'd be a good YouTube channel name. Hey, and so that's how fits. that's how it went. So um it, yeah, I mean that was it for me. Well Mike, what about you? I know you're Well, I tried several names, but they were all taken. And so Greek God. Yeah. <laughs> <all that. laughs> Greek God. <laughs> so when I started up my channel, I uh, I forget what name I used. I didn't like it. So I went looking for names, and Missouri, of course, is the state I'm living in. And, uh, and I thought, well, I'll just put Mike behind it. And nobody took that name, so I, this is the name I've come up with. And it kind of kind of stuck, kind of rung, you know, M.M. Yeah. Missouri Mike. So kind of two M's together. Worked out good. And Jeff, how long have you been doing YouTube and uh, uh, as overall, how long have you been doing YouTube? I think I started my channel December of 2015, I think is when, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's when it is. I don't know what it says on YouTube, I have yeah. to look, but I think it was December of 2015. You, you're now approaching... I believe I looked right. Seventeen thousand. It's it's. You're yeah, getting there. You're not over that yet. There. You're getting no, there. You're getting very yeah. close to seventeen thousand subscribers. Yeah. How has that changed your life from when you first started to now? You're seventeen thousand subscribers. I remember when I started watching you, it was five thousand subscribers, and then that's just been the last year and a half. Yeah. You know, you've really grown. Your channel has really exploded. You know it. I think, and, and of course, we've talked about this as being YouTubers, the larger the channel gets, you have to be careful not to put pressure on yourself. Uh, because, like who's Weedy King? <laughs> yeah, well, that part of it's fun, you know. Um, but pressure on yourself to produce a good video every week. Because, um, and of course, with my situation now, it's even more hard for me to do. Um, but, you know, when it gets like that, it, it honestly... In my situation, knowing that, hey, I'm not going to be able to probably put out a video every week like I want to just because, you know, my stage of life right now uh, with having to put in the hours that I have to put in, it's going to be rough for me. You know, and again, like I said, I have seven kids and I love to see my kids. And so uh, Mike and I are still going out at least once a week. We're trying, um, but... 
when my partner gets up with the business and and uh, frees up some more time for me, you know, we'll be able to get back in and do it. But I have to vouch for you guys. One day digging with y'all is like a week <laughs> digging with some other folks. Y'all are <laughs> die hard for one day hard digging. We we do. And, and uh, we don't take breaks. No, no, no lunch no breaks. Lunch break. And here I am, preacher digger up here over there, about to pass out. You know. You, well, you guys do a lot of digging in one day, though. And we, and we do. And, and again, you know, if for my situation, you know, if I get that day that I can free up and, uh, you know, of course, we've got things on the farm that probably need to get done. But if I do get that one day, then we want to make the most of it. And yeah. we will knock doors, knock doors, right. knock doors. And a lot and, of no's involved. I mean, yeah. you don't realize how much work goes involved, you know, goes into it. I mean, I asked six people a day, and I got six no's, you know. So you Jeff, know. how many did you get? <laughs> we'll I go ahead and put I that out there. four for four. Four, four, four. 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 Yeah. But yeah. I've had days when I've been yeah. pretty good. So. And, and we do. We go back and forth. And, you know, we both know the houses that we do the best at. And, uh, and, and Mike, if someone's in the yard when they're out, that it's different for me. Mike does good with that. Mm-hmm. If they're out mowing the grass or anything, you know, that's one thing Mike you'll yeah. always, and he knows. He's already unbuckling by the yeah. time we're pulling up because he knows that's... Well, you got to have the bad days to enjoy the yeah. good days, yeah. too. Well, and we both do. I mean, we've both had, you know, bad days. And, Some days uh, you feel the vibe and you've got the mojo and you just yeah. go for it, you know. But there's a lot of work involved with, with putting out a video. And, and there's also a lot of work with, you know, getting permissions and stuff. It's, it doesn't fall in your lap. You know, you got to go after it. And, and, you know, just like we talked uh, on the way up, um, our area is so saturated with hunters and has been since the 70s yeah. that, you know, to find the quality stuff that we like to find, we have to travel. Yeah. What did we drive? Two hours today yeah, two just hours to get to, to some hunting ground. And, <clears throat> and we still hit a bunch that were, you know, questionable whether they've been hit or not but we're always thankful hey, for that paid one good yard and you know we like finding the older stuff i mean we could mm-hmm. probably you know go in on some 1930s houses or 40s houses and dig some more modern silver lots but, of silver yeah. yeah but we're wanting that turn of the century type silver you know the barbers and older that's yep. what we that's ma- what we're after we kind of made a commitment about two years ago that if we couldn't find an indian in the yard we weren't interested in hunting, right? <laughs> Got to have an Indian. And that, I mean, that was, you know, so that, so that puts us at hunting, you know, houses. We kind of look at like 1916 and before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, that's a and, good, uh, that's a good philosophy. For yeah, sure. it is. But that's also every house that everyone else wants to right, hunt. Right, that's right. And so we run into a lot of, you know, ones that have already been detected. You know, we wish, I'm, I don't want to point this out, this house that we hunted today that had been detected before. And I'm hunting this thing, and I'm like, man, this yard. It's cleaned out. There was nothing there. And I'm like, it looks so familiar. Yeah, we had hunted it. Uh-huh. We yeah. were the ones that had hunted it once. Yeah. Other guys had hunted it, too. But That's called old age. That's called old age. <laughs> and I'm sitting there the whole time. I'm thinking, man, this is some serious deja vu I got going on here. And it, it just so happened that Mike took the side that he took last time, and I took the side I took. Get, you, getting old sucks. Y'all did good because I didn't even find anything in that yard yeah. either. Yeah. A clad quarter and a dime, I think is all it is. Yeah. That was on Mike's side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many of those yards that we hunt, though, so many of them, even though, even though this is a, this is a, to me, it's a tip. You know, don't be discouraged because it's already been metal detected. Yeah. Because all you have to do is go in and find just a few good targets, and that'll make your, that'll make your day, you know. Well, since we're on that subject, um, Mike, what would you say to someone who's just getting into YouTube or getting into metal detecting per se, you know, just starting out? What would be some advice about some of these yards? What are some things that they need to look for to really get on some good properties and stuff like well, that? Well, I would look at the, first of all, look at the age of the street you're on. That's a, that's a good indicator there. I mean, the sidewalk curbs, if they're the old ones that are placed in there, by hand and you can tell because they're not evenly stretched down through there if they freshly poured big indicator how old the street is then you're going to look at the house foundation you're also going to look at the chimney those are big indicators on how old the house would be and then of course the yard structure too is the 
is the sidewalk six inches below the, the depth of the yard, have they, you feel like they brought in mm -hmm. dirt, you know, and, and put dirt on top 20 years ago, and so now you're going to find modern stuff. And those are all the things that we look for, you know. Big indicator, big trees in the yard, big indicator that, hey, that's an older yard, you know. Uh, there could have been a house there prior to that, but, you know, if there's big trees there, and you got those indicators, sidewalk strips are old, you know, look for all those things. And, um, and two, I think when you're digging your coins, you're probably at least looking for the Wheaties. If there's Wheaties out there, you know at least there's going to be some Silvers. Yeah, or a chance. And, and a chance. Yeah. And then if you're at an old house, what's the rule that y'all kind of share with me today? If you look at this house, you're looking at coins at what age going back and we, forward? We do a 30-year 30, 30 rule. And yeah. so we think if if we want to be able, and we kind of a thing, you can reach into your pocket right now and pull out your change, and there's probably something 30 years old. Right. And so we kind of take that back to, and you know, it wasn't until the 1930s that they started pulling Indians out of circulation anyway. Uh, and, of course, they don't do it as aggressive as they do now because there weren't as many banks back then. But um, they, we look at 1930 and, and before, and we really like, we really like teens and before. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we pass up 1920 built houses, which is probably stupid. To hunt a 1916, right. uh, but it, we have just one of our best Indian yards ever was a 1916 mm -hmm. house, and and we dug a lot of Indians and 1800s Indians, yeah. and so we have we have found kind of that 30 year rule, um, you know. Well, in today's time, it'd be a 1990 penny. You know, mm -hmm. That's it's not that old yeah. if you're 51. Like right. I am. <laughs> I thought you were 84, Jeff said earlier. You've got a birthday coming he's, up. He's by probably the way. right between the two. So we'll say happy birthday to Missouri yeah, Mike yeah. because by the time well, this video comes out, it'll be his birthday. Yeah. And he'll be 84 years old. 18th? 30th. 30th. Oh, yeah. it's not. August 30th, yeah. August 30th. August 30th. Yeah. Birthday time. Send Mikey some love. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. need it. All I can comment, get. Comment below, happy birthday, Mikey. You yeah. know, or Missouri M&M, &M, Missouri Mike, Mike, however you want to say yeah. it. Um, we kind of gave it away a while ago, but if, in case somebody wasn't really listening, how often do you guys really go out and detect, and how long do you detect when you go out, and how far do you travel and stuff like that, on, on general, in general? Well, we used to go two days a week. We went Mondays and Thursdays, and, uh, and normally I'm at Mike's house at 7 in the morning. I live an hour from here, yeah. so I leave my house at 6, I'm here at 7, and... We don't start knocking doors till after nine in the morning, so however far we can drive yeah. before door knocking time uh, is about what we do. Yeah. And we might go west, we might right. go east, we might go north. We've gone south. And on on a, on a given day, Mike, you know, we kind of gave this away a while ago. Mm -hmm. How many houses do you door knock, and what's the percentage, on average, your percentage well, of the houses? Well, Jeff's better at it than I am. I'll say that he's got the charisma more so than I do. I would say Jeff's 80%, every bit of it. It's and that I, confidence that he exudes, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So. And, you know, I, I really, you know, any given day, I can be 70 to 80, but, you know, I'm probably 65 to 70% as an average um, on my permission. So, and, it, it, you know, I have my days where they're all yeses, too, and then I have a lot of days where they're all no's, like today. So it depends. Yeah. You know, the biggest tip I can give everybody out there is that when you get on a yard and you're hunting it, <clears throat> So you go 10 feet, you don't get a good signal. You go 20 feet, you don't get a good signal. Just don't give up on that yard right away, you know. Slow down because there's not a lot of yards out there with the detectors that are out right now that haven't already been metal detected. Most of the <laughs> yards have been hit at least once, you know. Finding that yard that's never been touched. That's the, that's the goal. It's hard to do, you know. We might come across one out of every 30 that's never been detected and and that that's doing you know that's three three hunts we might have one yard that is what i would call a yard that's never been touched but you know when we go out there with our machines you know we're turning them on we're listening for those deeper targets those deep signals and we're taking our time you know don't get in any hurry there's there's no sense running through the yard to run and get to another yard that's probably already been metal detected and you're doing the same thing so slow down take your time you we, we've had We've had many, many yards that we hunted and hunted, and then 
at the very <coughs> end we get into the good stuff and just yeah. because we went slow and yeah. if we would have if we would have said 20 minutes in ah, there's nothing here right. and we've done that on some yards but when we get the, the permissions we're going for when we get those permissions by golly we're going to spend the time yeah and we're going to try to find what someone else did that was kind of the case today you know yeah. we got on that yard and got on that first yard today and, and hunted it and found a few items went to the neighbor's yard found just a few items there but then we come back on that corner off the side strip and you got three, three. silvers and you know right there boom 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 i got a silver and, and a weed over there on a side yard so maybe that was an area that wasn't touched in the past or if it had been hunted that mm. was just bypassed because nobody had really you know it wasn't like the rest of the yard there was several signals in that yeah. one square area so you know, just take your time and make sure you look at it hard. And if somebody says, well, it's been hunted before, and they give you that line. Yeah, do say, it anyway. Hey, yeah, do, do it anyway. I, we were in a yard one time. lady says, yeah, it's been detected. Jeff goes on, turns the machine on, goes right underneath this tree. Boom, two barber quarters right in the oh, wow. Spill right there. Barber quarter spill. So, you know. And that was about all we found. You found an Indian or two. I got, I got two or three Indians yeah. up there. It's never hunted out, as they say. That's true, isn't it? It's well, never hunted out. People swing and people have gaps on their swings, you know. Right. I mean, it. it and plus a different angle. I mean, when you right. go at a different right. angle, you know, sometimes right. you, you may not pick it up, but hit another angle and you'll get a little bleep, and there yeah. it is. There our. It is. our when we go into yards, and this is something that's kind of evolved, I go in and I, I visualize with my coil painting the grass. Right. You know, and, and you can do a way better job, you know, I do three swings to every step. That's different than, you know. I do three steps to every swing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's actually some detectors, and I won't say the name or anything, nothing like that, but they actually will put a blue line in, in, in trace you where you go and then when you get through you can upload that onto a map right. and it lays it out for you mm -hmm. and when you go back if it's like a big yard or I mainly do it in Civil War fields right. you know big fields and you want to go back to that right. spot you can you can kind of mm -hmm. find it like that so let me ask you some rapid fire questions just boom boom you, you guys answer it as quick as you can and I'll ask it for both of you if you only had one type of detecting that you could do just one what type of detecting would that be Mike, we'll go with you. I'd be land hunting for sure. Yeah. Door knocking permissions. I, I'm I'm liking the coins. The yeah. coins is where it's at for me. I love digging coins. Relics are cool too, don't get me wrong, but I'll dig a coin before I'll dig a relic. Right. Yeah. Plus being a yard, it's a lot less walking than being in a field. Sure. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. What about you, Jeff? You only I, had one time. I I would door knock. Door knock? It's a lot of fun. That's one of my favorites too, is, is yeah. that um, And you meet a lot of good good people doing it yeah. too. Uh, what type of metal detector do you use? Um, you know, we're both swinging the Nokta Macro Amphibio. Y'all have a secondary backup detectors as well that and you the use? Simplex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have y'all tried other detectors as well? I've had a CTX, an e track AT Pro, Equinox 600. I got a GPX 4500. I have yeah. an addiction. Yeah, the 705. Yeah. I had the 705, which I didn't care for. Mm -hmm. What would you think, Jeff, would be, and I guess this is going to depend upon the detectors, but what would you consider your greatest find? That's funny. People will laugh. My first 1898 dog tag license. That, to me, that was, that was my favorite find. Now, my breastplate, my Civil War breastplate would probably be second because we hunted so hard to hopefully find a plate one day. But that, I've, I've got a thing for dog tags and Tootsie Toys. And, you know, when I crack the 1800s, and I've done it twice, I've been fortunate enough to find two 1800s dog tags. Um, that was just cool. I mean, I have so many favorites. I love tokens. I love, mm -hmm. you know, coins. I love coins too. I lo especially love coins because they tell you the year they were minted, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, I like the tokens because of the history, and I like to look up and try to find, you know, especially if you find like a tavern token. Yeah. From, I, you know, I found a token one time that had fo phone number 472 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the old like numbers. Three numbers, you know. 
Um, things like that are just, you know, I think the whole gist of why we metal detect is, in a way, it kind of takes us back to the time. Yeah. You know? It's, it's not what you find, it's what you find out, too. Exactly. You know, you're learning to do, to do your research, and, and yeah, and, you know, being a favorite find, that could be anything to anybody, yeah. you know. Mike, what about you? What would you think um, is, what was your favorite find? My favorite find is being able to be able to do it every day. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious about that. Uh, you know, the experience, I've learned more about different parts of the states we went to and the, the time we spent together as friends and, and getting out and just enjoying life. That's a find in itself. I've, made, it, Mikey, I've made Mikey a traveler. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I was in my own little circle here, but yeah, you find so many good items that it's hard to put a, a favorite on there, you know. I mean, they all are irrelevant in their own way. And they all have a, a meaning, but are we ever going to sell them? Probably not. Uh, maybe my kids will probably throw them in the trash one yeah. or someday. But your, you know. your box plate has to rank high, and oh, yeah. and not only because it's a stellar box plate, but I found my breastplate, and then he found the box plate 15 feet away. Oh wow! You know? So <clears throat> it was, and it was, and it was not in a Civil War camp. Now that kind of leads into my next question. Um, is, is what would be your greatest day that you really remember that you when you left and go home it's like oh I can't believe we had this day unbelievable day what would be that that moment y'all had shared oh, together you go first I know it's <clears> probably <throat> the uh, the reigning silver yard huh that was a good yard 18 silvers in one one yard plus a lot of other great coins and just every step was a, a good coin and it, you knew you were going to dig a good coin. I mean, every step was a coin. Every step, and it was old coins. I mean, V nickels, buffaloes, Indians, Indians, just Barbers. unbelievable. Yeah, you know? that was an incredible yard. I think if anybody watched your videos, you, we probably know where you're going to go with this question. Yeah, I would say the day that we, me and Wes Stringer, uh, rented a mini excavator and unearthed 700 and. 20 some odd silver coins. That's about when I started watching you on YouTube yeah. is at that moment right then. <clears throat> that, was, like, that was incredible. And you know, of course we love Wes to death. We call him the seated magnet because every time he comes up and goes with us, one of us finds a seated. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it, I mean, it's really strange. We've only had like maybe two times ever that someone hasn't found a seated coin. Yeah. Wow. And you know, sometimes it's Wes. I got lucky. We needed him today for with, my, with my trifecta. Yeah, I needed to get a seat to you. But yeah, Wes, I tell you, Wes is something else. He's he's uh, we we really enjoy hunting with him. And that whole silver hoard was, you know, when he stumbled <laughs> upon that, and he just he he wanted it documented. Yeah. And, and so I was. Like, Y'all documented. It was good. We did. Y'all did the interview you, and all that. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, wham wham, you guys complaining." They don't understand the work that we did. Yeah. You know, there that was a lot nicer. When that we was a, the equipment in. a remarkable. That's that find of a lifetime oh, type of it thing. It was. So. It was, and it was so fun. I mean, honestly, as tired as we were, Wes and I. I mean, you know, we we just had a blast. Uh, well, thinking of those days that we have a good time, mm -hmm. you know, you, we know that we don't always have those days. And some days are really bad, but we're not going to talk about the bad days. I'm going to talk, I, I'm going to ask you about what is the scariest day? Have you ever had a scary moment mm -hmm. in detecting, Mike? Mm. I can tell you the one I was, me and you were together. And what one was that? We, were, we weren't far from here. And I'm down on my knees, and this crackhead comes by with his pit bull oh. off the leash. And this guy's just, he was violently yelling and everything like that, and the pit bull's coming right, at, it actually went between you and I, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm like, oh boy. So I've got my, you know, my lash digger, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, uh, and I'm on my knees. That dog paid us no attention and went by. Crackhead paid us no attention and went on by, and it was like, okay, that Shoot. was, but it was spooky. Yeah, you know? those moments are really when they come up on you like that, you know. Have we heard shots fired before? I thought we, did we not? I thought no, we did. We've had the know. police called on us several times. That's not scary, though. No, but uh, got run off, but that was not because we didn't have permission. It was because either somebody, a neighbor didn't want us around or something like that. That's mm -hmm. happened several times, you know, because, the, you know, I don't mean bad, but the nosy neighbor, mm -hmm. you know, thinks they own the whole 
yeah. every house on the street, and that's happened quite a bit. Probably one of my scariest times was uh, on the river. <laughs> I'm not a great river kayaker. If you ever watch any of the videos that are out there, I, I struggle more than more than I do. I just remember you on the river that one year you lost your hat. Oh yeah, I lost my hat. You know why? And it was on the that. back of your, your yeah, back. You no, know, what was so funny about that is is you pull up to the boat ramp, and I'm at the boat ramp, and I'm getting out and I'm pulling my kayak up, and I hear this splash. And I turned, oh, I wish I could have had, I wish I had had the camera going. Mm -hmm. This splash, and here comes That was a funny Mikey moment. Up. That was really funny. And, but know. he comes, and I go, what were you doing? He said, I was getting out of my boat. <laughs> it's four foot of water there. You can't get out of a kayak in four foot of water. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not a great swimmer, you know, so. <laughs> Did you ever find your hat? It was on my hat. <laughs> but I really thought, I mean, that wasn't stage deal. I really thought. Yeah, that's what made it real. Where's my hat at? Where's my hat? I thought I was floating down the river because I got a lot of oil in my skin. You know, I thought it should float. Well, he sat there and looked for a while before I even got the video going. But you know, <laughs> if you had a good friend that would be loyal to you, and he no. would tell you those things, you know. But that's instead, like, he turns the camera on. Yeah. He wants to get a moment, you know. He either <laughs> turns my machine off. And yeah, yeah. I'm able to take it without knowing it's on. Oh, man. Yeah. I wonder what, what could I have found that day if I'd only had my machine turned off? Well, you could have walked back and done it again. Yeah. What you should have done is realize that he <laughs> did that, and then come up and say you got a silver half or something yeah. like that, yeah. you know, and just have it planted like that. All right. Now, this is a tricky question. Now you don't have to answer if you don't want to. You can ask. You can answer it generically or whatever. But what YouTube? When you go to YouTube and you watch YouTube, who do you watch? Who, who's some of the people that you're out there watching? Who's some of your favorites? If you, I know we want to give everybody a free, a, a fair shake and talk about <coughs> stuff like that. But you know, who do you kind of watch? Are you talking metal detecting? Metal. Or talking I'm taking treasure hunting YouTube videos. Could be anything. I enjoy watching Man Plus River, um, Dallas. I enjoy watching his videos. Um, I I go, of course, I watch Jason Quarter Hoarder. You know, he's just, you know, when you know the guys, it's, you know. Um, but I watch, I watch a little bit of everyone's. Um, I don't get to watch near as much as I used to. Um, but, like, the guys the Dirty Dozen group that we went, you know, I always try to, if I can, catch, you know, the latest videos. Um, of course, I like to watch the Hoover Boys, too. I like to see what they're finding. I like Brad at Green Mountain, metal detecting. Um, but there's a lot of different ones. I like I like to watch disc golf, believe it or not. That's, that's <laughs> you know, when I get the time, that's what I seem to go to. Uh, yeah. that's, passion Mike, what about you what about well, I some watch, uh, I watch a lot of videos but I don't watch them usually all the way to the end probably my fault but usually I get into them and I watch a little bit and then I'll go watch somebody else so yeah. I like watching um, Adventures in Dirt to see kind yeah. of DK what, DK yeah because see if I know anybody or you know what the general uh, metal detecting group what they've been finding through the week I always thought that was a great show that you know that he has on uh, you know, it's a lot of the better finds that people have found through the week, you know, so you kind of get to watch a lot of people's best finds of their videos, I should say, so I like doing that. I like to catch live streams, too. Yeah, those are good. I, I enjoy that. I, you know, the interaction with chatting and things like that is fun, too. If you had to share some advice as we get down to our last couple of questions here uh, to some YouTubers to kind of build their YouTube channels, uh, what would be kind of some just some tidbits of advice to really give them a you know advantage on really growing their channel? I would say you know probably the best thing you can do is be active, be active on other people's channels, um, you know comment, watch other people's videos, uh, and and the, that's the number one thing. But the the uh, also take the time to put out quality content. You know, have fun with it. That's right. the one thing that I think um, really helped my channel was I got to the point where I went because you try to please everyone, mm -hmm. and you gotta you you know you have to be thick skinned right. because there's a lot of <clears throat> knuckleheads in this world, and they want to comment on your video <clears throat> in a bad way, and it's fine. You know, they can, but you got to be pretty thick skinned because there's some, and you know. Thankfully, YouTube does hold 
quite a few comments for review and so those viewing at home who like to read comments don't see all the bad stuff that yeah. we get to see mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you know you got to be thick-skinned going in and don't debate them don't fight them yeah right you know that's hard mm -hmm. for some of us you know the, I just especially ignore, us guys I ignore who, them I just especially ignore those guys who are smart Alex you know yeah. um, I, I you know there's many times I I write a smart Alec -y comment and then erase it that made me feel good just to get it off my <laughs> chest you know like I was telling you today I don't know why people want to be negative on comments anyway I have no it's, idea. It's like a TV or radio. If you don't want to watch it, just turn it yeah. off. You don't have to be ugly about it. You know, we're out here to have fun and stuff like that. Encourage the hobby of metal detecting. Yeah. Mike, what about you? What well, would be would, some advice you would I give was, some... If I was getting into YouTube, I wouldn't get frustrated because you're not getting a lot of views, but I would be consistent. In other words, if you're going to think you're going to put out a video every two weeks, then if it's a two o'clock on Tuesday or three o'clock on Wednesday that you're going to put that video out put that video out the same time every week at the same you know or whatever if you're doing it bi-weekly do it don't be doing it eight o'clock at night one night a week later two weeks later you know seven o'clock in the morning three weeks later it's noon you know put yeah. it out at the same time and get a routine going and then your your fans or your subscribers will know, hey, I like that guy. He's, he comes on. It's kind of like a TV show that you remember uh, watching when you were a kid, you know. Uh, Star Trek came on 6 o'clock. We were there watching Star Trek 6 o'clock every night, you know. So they're going to remember you, say, I like that guy's video. When's he come out? Oh, yeah, he puts his out on Tuesdays at 3. Boom. They're expecting you to be on Tuesdays at 3. <clears throat> and, and one thing, like I was talking with you earlier, and, and what one thing that could help your channel grow is just like Mike was saying you know get your set time but then every once in a while throw out a bonus one in a different time slot at a different time because there are people you can build a bulk audience and you get okay like if I put mine out at 2 30 on Monday which is when I put mine out um, then I've got a core base that are free at that time that will watch it. Um, but if I put it out, say, Thursday, put an extra one out Thursday at 10 a.m., then, hey, I bring in a whole nother group of people who might be on YouTube at that time. And so, you know, mixing it, having your core time set, but then mixing it up a little bit uh, can help to add mm -hmm. to your subscriber base and get you watchers as well. Mike, before we go, tell the Tell the audience um, the name of your channel. Are you on Facebook, Instagram? How they can get, uh, you know, what you know? Yeah, it's Missouri Mike Metal Detecting. That will get you the to the YouTube part of it. And then uh, also I have a Facebook channel, and it's also Missouri Mike. And uh, feel free to comment on there or, or post anything you know on there. Just give me a drop me a message or anything like and that. And when do you upload your videos every? Um, Mondays at 1.30. At Mondays at 1.30. Not a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, what about you? Uh, when do you upload your videos? Apparently at 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. <Yeah. laughs> I've had the old a.m. p.m. mess up this last yeah. time, and it's funny because Mike's done it twice, and I've razzed him about it, and then yeah. boom, I do it. Uh, so you want to kill your video, release it at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, everybody's sleeping. Nobody's yeah. watching. TV. Nobody's watching. Well, tell them, tell them, you know, Plugmaster Ford, of course, yep. is your channel, but are you on Instagram, Facebook? And tell us, too, also, I know that you just opened up a new business. I did, yeah. And I think you also deal in detectors if somebody's in the end. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well. Plug it right here. I, I got a bunch. Plugmaster Ford is my YouTube channel. I also have a Facebook group. I, say, I call it I Have, but we do. I started the group called Plugmasters. And it's just, you know, it's a great place to post your finds. Um, you know, it's clean. We keep it clean. There's no bad language. You know, if you do, you get removed. And so, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice place. And we've always shared our finds there. Um, and we, we've kind of gotten away from doing that as much. Just, yeah. it's been bizarre. Been a bad summer. Right? Been a bad summer, summer yeah. Great, not just for us. We've heard it's been that way for everyone. So, uh, also have Instagram. I don't even know what it, my Instagram is. Jeff Plugmaster Ford, maybe. I don't know. 
but I am on Instagram. I see your posts <laughs> all the time. Yeah. yeah, I think I've posted nine times, maybe thirteen. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, yeah, it's just another thing that's hard for me to keep up with. But uh, yeah, I started a new business, and that's really cut into my detector time. Uh, as of July 1st, Patriots Gold and Silver uh, is the name, and we deal in bulk um, bullion, gold and silver bullion. And, uh, and it's just been an incredible business. But like I said, we started July 1st, and it has been absolutely insane. Uh, sales through the roof <coughs> and people selling me stuff and so. Um, it, it's a it's a fun business. I enjoy that. You if, know, if somebody is in sales. the in the looking for a detector, are you still selling detectors? Yeah, I, I'm an, I'm set up uh, as an affiliate um, with with Kellyco is one of them. I also deal with other uh, detector stores, and so uh, if you email me at plugmasterford at gmail dot com, I can get you a discount code um, that could help save you some money. And so and that's great. I mean, I've We've helped out a lot of people. I say we, you know, the affiliates have, and uh, and it's a neat deal. I mean, you know, it'll save you some money, and you know, the more expensive machine you buy, the more you yeah. save, of course. And we do get, you know, we get compensated. We get a, a percentage of of that, which is nice. I mean, it, you know, I tell you, I've, we put in a lot of email hours. Uh, just you know, I th I didn't have any idea going into it what it would take and, uh, and but you know I've had times where I've 18 emails back and forth with someone oh, wow. um, before <laughs> they say okay hey, I want to get this you know and I make nine dollars and it you know I mean it, it's but it's I enjoy that part of it I always want to help people out and uh, and maybe at Patriots Gold and Silver we might start stocking something uh, okay. metal detecting related that's that would be an interesting that's something thing. yeah, yeah that we will probably try to work out. Well, I appreciate you two, you know, you invited me up, and Mike, you come along, I appreciate you doing that, and you two sitting down and doing this interview I'm with me. Along. Yeah, and so I appreciate that very like much. Fungus. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and this, this video, in this video, I'll make sure that uh, uh, all their information is going to be in the description, and probably even up on the screen as you watch this, you know, we'll put uh, the... Uh, the websites and things like that out there and list them out. So make sure you check out Missouri Mike and check out Plugmaster 4. They put videos out every week and they're 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 a hoot now. They they always joking. Or I should say Jeff is joking with Mike and Mike's the butt of the jokes half the time. So but anyway they're a great couple. I got to know them and uh, and I appreciate y'all sharing the finds today. And those videos will be out coming out to well before this video here. Those videos will be out. But anyway Anything else you want to say before we go? One last word, anything. Just keep detecting. Don't give up. And don't put your metal detector in the closet and say, well, I'm done. You know, you got to keep going. You know? yeah. And that's all I can say is, yeah, you're going to have bad days, but if you keep going, good days will happen. Jeff, can you get us a, a woohoo? Woohoo! <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. There you go. There you go. Hey, check these guys out. They're great, uh, great channel, and great guys. And so, uh, um, until we meet again, I just want to tell everybody happy hunting and just God bless. You.